In today's tutorial, we're going to be creating this painterly effect so that any of your renders look like it was painted and the shader can be implemented on any of your objects. It's going to be a very simple tutorial. However, we'll be learning how to use this in many different situations. So let's go ahead and actually begin the tutorial. In our default scene, we'll just go ahead and delete the default cube and add in maybe a mesh monkey, which is Suzanne, to apply our material on. Now we'll scale this monkey up and press Ctrl 3 to add in a subdivision surface of level 3, after which we'll right click and choose Shade Smooth. Now the base idea is to make Blender feel like some of these surfaces are flat so that the shading makes it look like it was done in patches. So let's first start by creating that effect and to do that let's set up the scene by switching our viewport shading to render and then selecting this light and maybe pressing GY to just move it forward and maybe shift D to duplicate it and move it to the bottom as well so that there's some sort of lighting on all of the different faces. Remember that this effect depends on the lights present in the scene so you definitely need to have at least one light present in your scene. Now let's bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and then change this from the 3D viewport to the shader editor. Now to give ourselves some more space to work, we'll tap N to remove the side panel and then we'll select Suzanne. We'll go to our material properties and press this plus button to create a new material. Since we want to mess around with the normals of this object, we have to go ahead and search for a geometry node which will give us access to the normals of this particular object. Now we essentially want to get this normal data and convert it into different cells. Now we can convert anything into cells by using the Voronoi texture, which actually gives out cells as the output. So if we just preview it by control shift clicking it with the node wrangler enabled, you can see how we get these different cells and we can change the size of the cells by playing around with this scale value. And since we want to mess around with the normal data, we're going to be using the position values of this Voronoi texture. So for the vector, let's go ahead and take this normal and plug that into the vector so that we now get normal data, except it's going to be shaded into its own cells. So this is exactly what we wanted. And this is the basis of our painted effect. So let's go ahead and plug this into the normal of the principled BSDF. But of course, if we do this and just control shift click the principal PSDF to preview it, it's not going to look like a painting yet. So to make this into a painting, we have to actually get these edges and add in some amount of noise so that it looks like a brush stroke. So let's go ahead and do that by simply mixing some amount of noise between this normal data before it goes into the vector input of this Voronoi texture. So let's search for a noise texture. And again, we have to make sure that we're using the object coordinates. So let's press Ctrl T with the node wrangler enabled to get the texture coordinate and mapping nodes after which we can switch from generated to object. Now to mix this noise texture in to the Voronoi texture, we're actually going to search for a mix color node and we're gonna plug that in right here. Now the reason why we're using a mix color instead of a mix vector is because we get all of these different options for mixing the two values in. So if we were to directly plug this color into socket B, we can actually see what it starts doing. And of course, we can play around with the values of the noise texture as well. But before we do that, we should remember that the noise texture is always centered around 0 0.5. For this effect to work, we need to make sure that it's centered around 0. So let's press Shift A and search for a vector math node and simply subtract a value of 0.5 on all the axes. So change it from add to subtract and change this to 0.5 on all of the axes. Now let's go ahead and just increase the detail from two to maybe something like 15 itself and we'll increase the roughness to maybe 0.8. Now that gives us a really good effect, but we can increase or decrease this influence as well. First off, I'd like to change this scale down to something like two so that the effect is reduced and maybe the detail can also be around eight ish because the higher the detail is, the longer it's going to take to render. So make sure that it's at the lowest value while giving you the exact effect that you want. The next thing is we can actually control the strength of this as well using another vector math node set to scale so that we can actually multiply the effect. So let's search for a vector math and simply plug that in after the subtract value and change it to scale. And now you should be able to see that as we scale this up, the effect becomes more and more intense and you actually start losing away the different cells that we create using this Voronoi texture. So make sure that your scale does not go so high that the entire cell shading effect is gone and it just becomes a normal roughness map, but make sure that it's high enough to give this effect some more power. So I think I'm going to go with a value of 2.3 and that should be good enough. Now, the main thing that I wanted to show is that you can have this effect in different ways. So right now we have it set to mix and this is the effect that you're getting. However, you can change this from mix to any of these values to get different effects. 
Apart from that, you can also increase or decrease the overlay to change from the proper normal data to complete noise data. So make sure that you play around with these factors as well as the different mixing or blend modes. If you actually keep it at something like overlay or soft light, you'll see that you can increase the factor all the way to one without actually completely losing the cell effect. So even here, the different cells are still visible, but there's also a lot of the noise that's added in. However, this actually pushes everything towards its extremities, which means it slightly increases the contrast. So instead of soft light, you could try overlays or linear light as well. It's really up to you to try out the different effects. So this is what overlay looks like. And I think for most of my situations, I tend to use the add itself, but when you switch it to add, the factor does not necessarily have to be one. And you can actually just reduce the factor by a little bit. Maybe I'll go with a factor of 0.7 and that will be good enough for my scene. Apart from that, make sure you do keep playing around with the scale of the different textures. So in this case, I'm going to reduce the Voronoi's texture to maybe three, and I'm going to keep the noise texture scale at something slightly higher, maybe something like five. So I think that gives a good enough look, but we still have to play around with the actual colors of the object. So right now we have the base color set to white itself. We can always change that to give it the color that you want. So since this is a monkey, I want to give it some sort of a brownish color. So maybe let's just reduce that and keep it at something like this. Along with that, I'll reduce the specular value down to zero. If you keep the specular value higher, it more or less should look like wetter paint because it will be reflecting more light. By keeping the specular value down, it's going to look more like dried old paint where there's no actual reflection of light occurring. Apart from that, the roughness slider could also be increased while your specular is higher to remove the wetness of the paint. In my case, I'll keep the roughness value at 0.5 and the specular at 0.5 itself, which is the default value, so that it looks like a drying paint and there's quite a bit of reflections occurring, which I think looks good enough for my scene. Now, if you were to apply this material to other objects, this is how you would do it. First, let's just change this to paint material and let's add in some more objects to the scene. So here I've imported a flower that I had created in a previous tutorial. If you want to know how to create this particular flower, you can check out this video over here where we go step by step into creating this particular flower, as well as giving it some more sci-fi looking materials. However, in today's video, we're going to give this the same painterly effect to make it look like a painted flower when we render it. So what we do is we select one of the objects and give it that same painted material from this drop down list over here. Once you give it the material, go ahead and press this button to actually make it its own material. And then you can rename this to whatever you want. However, now you can make changes by just changing this base color. So let's go ahead and make this a brighter color and maybe give it a pinkish hue. So something like that might be what a petal would look like. Now, along with that, I think the scale has to be changed. So let's go ahead and change this scale down till you get an effect that you like. Along with that, I'm also going to decrease this scale down to one. And I think that looks more like a painted flower. So we're just going to play around with these values until it looks good enough for the actual petals. Now, when we want to take this and duplicate it to the other objects, we just select the object choose the same material and then press this duplicate button and then simply change the color. It's actually as simple as doing that and you can apply it to any object that you have in your scene any number of times. Remember for each object, you might have to play around with the scales and when you do play around with the scales, you will get something or the other that suits your particular scene. Make sure you do the same thing for the stamen as well as the pistol as well as the sepals down here. So maybe I'll just show you for the sepals once again, choose the same paint material press this button to duplicate it and then go ahead and change it to maybe a greenish color. So that's actually all you have to do to get this to be working. And it's really that simple. So now this same effect can actually be applied to the entire world as well, which will make it look like the background for whatever object you have. In order to do that, let's switch this from object to world and give the world the same material setup. So we're simply going to search for a Voronoi texture as well as a geometry node. Now, even though the world technically does not have geometry, the normals are still calculated for the world. So you can plug this in right here. Remember, we're going to be using a mix color node so that we can mix in some amount of noise. So let's search for the noise texture. And then again, press Control T to get the mapping and texture coordinate nodes, switch over to object, and then plug this into socket B. Again, we're going to change from mix to add, and we're going to increase the factor to maybe 0 0.7. The noise texture has to be centered around zero. So let's just shift these to the side. Press Shift A and search for a vector math node, as well as another vector math node by pressing Shift D and plugging it in right there. 
we'll subtract a value of 0 0.5 on the first vector math node and we'll scale it up by some amount in the second vector math node. Now let's go ahead and use this position output to control the factor of a color ramp node. So the way we do that is press shift A and search for a color ramp and now give it two colors. The dark color could remain as a black or a slightly darker variation of whatever color you're going for. So if you're going for a bluish color, maybe something like that. And then this brighter one can be the brighter version of that same color. Now let's take this position, plug it into the factor and then take this color and plug it into the color of the background node. Now, of course, we're going to have to play around with this noise texture. Let's increase the detail to maybe eight roughness to maybe 0 0.8. And now you do get this sort of a background, but this is also providing light to the object. We don't want that to happen. So what we want is a mix shader node, and we're going to control the factor using the is camera ray from the light path node. So let's just duplicate this background node and plug that into the second shader and then press shift A and search for a light path node. Now let's take this is camera ray and plug it into the factor. So if it is a camera ray, then it should get this textured value. So let's actually plug that into the second socket and this background node into the first socket. So now the scene is not being lit by the blue background, but the blue background will be seen whenever you look through the camera. However, the issue with doing this in the world background is that the normals are calculated. And if you were to just use this particular method, you'd have one entire side be completely black and the other side, the brightest color. So you'd actually get the main painterly effect in the central region. Now that might not be exactly what you want. So instead of using the position value, you can use the color value into the color ramp. And that way you won't have a certain section that has complete blackness or a certain section that has complete whiteness. That essentially gives you the same painterly effect the exact same way that you wanted it. Let's go ahead and just desaturate this blue a little bit, lighten this one up by a bit, and then just play around with the scales. And that should be good enough. If you're not liking the way the background is looking, you can always just add in another object like a UV sphere and just scale that up and then give this some subdivision surface by pressing maybe control two or control three and then right clicking shade smooth and giving this the same material as all of the other objects. Then you can do the exact same thing where you give it its own material and then go ahead and change the color to that bluish color. For the background, however, I don't want to be affected by lights at all. So I'm gonna make sure that I change the roughness all the way to one specular down to zero and I'm going to change the shadow mode from opaque to none and that'll act like a pretty good background for me. Remember if the background goes too far away and is not affected by the lights you won't be able to see the effect anymore so you have to either add in lights towards the back as well or make sure that it's scaled small enough to be affected by the lights and that's actually it for using this particular painterly effect. If you watched this far into the video thank you so much for watching. I genuinely appreciate it and I'm glad that you're actually enjoying the videos. My previous video was also a shader tutorial where I taught how to create a procedural scratched metal texture. So if you like this video, you'll definitely like that video as well. So do check it out. I post videos every single day. So after you're done with that video, go to my channel and find a video that you haven't watched before that intrigues you and you think might give you some value. Until my next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and don't forget to stay creative. This shader by itself can also be made to create much more complex effects and there's many more variations that can be added into it. I will be working on those in future videos, so stay tuned for that as well.